task management is how I manage all the different aspects of my life. Without it, honestly, I don't think I would be as productive as I am. And the app that I use to get all this done is Things. Now, I've used probably almost every single task manager on the App Store. That's not a joke. If you open up the App Store, type in Task Manager on my device, you'll see the cloud icon next to almost every app. But I've always come back to Things. I like the design, the UX and the UI. It's, it's easy to use, it's simple. It's not overly complicated like some task managers. It's got great automation features and just overall it works for me. And that's probably the most important point. The point of this video is to find what works for you. Now, hopefully there's stuff in this video that inspires you, gives you ideas, or maybe it does completely work for you. That would be fantastic. But don't try and force something just because a YouTuber or a blog post or a podcast says this works. Everyone's different, so treat your own productivity system like that. So getting started, the very first thing I do in the morning is come in and look at my task manager and I open the today view and things. This will show me everything that I need to work on today or stuff that's due for the day. This is my most important view. All the aspects of my life I've created areas for. Now areas and things are basically categories. So I have personal, business, a secret project that I'm currently working on, and video projects. These are the core aspects of my life right now. Areas can have both projects and tasks in them. For single one-off tasks, I just dump them in an area. So for something like get caught up on my backlog of email, I just throw that in the business area. But you can also put projects in areas as well. Now there's a difference between projects and areas. Areas are long-term aspects of your life. So like I was talking about personal or business, well, I, I hope my business is a long-term aspect of my life. But these are parts of my life that will be around forever. They don't have a fine due date. Whereas projects, they do have a fine due date or a completion date or a end goal in mind. So for something like a video project, when I hit publish, that video project is over. I can mark that project as complete and move on. Now, another example of a project is redoing my living room. Now, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while and I just haven't quite had the time, but I have steps in here for all the things that I want to accomplish. Find new furniture, redo my entertainment center, things like that. When all those steps are marked as complete, I can then mark that project as complete and it's done, it's completed. For every area and project, I put an emoji at the beginning of the title. This is to kind of differentiate everything and kind of make certain things stand out to me when I'm looking through my task manager. There are two exceptions for this, video projects and podcasts. Video projects always have a camera icon and podcasts always have a mic icon. I use the same icon for these to make them quickly stand out. Emojis also help make a task manager look a little more interesting and personal and not boring corporate software. I recently created a new area called research and tracking. Now this is very much an experiment and not something you would traditionally do with a task manager. But going back to my first point in this video, it's, it's okay to experiment with your task manager. Don't feel like you have to do what the latest productivity book says. Feel free to experiment. Now, what this area and subsequent projects does is, well, it tracks different things like movies I wanna watch, books I wanna read, video games I wanna play, shortcuts I wanna make, stuff like this. And why I'm doing this is because I used to have a bunch of different tracking apps. I used to use an Airtable database for shortcuts I wanna make. I've tried different apps for uh, movies and books I wanna watch and read and things like that. And it, it was just all over the place. And I just found I wasn't opening those tracking apps enough. So stuff was starting to fall through the cracks. Now I open things up multiple times a day. So by putting this stuff in things, it kind of keeps it in front of my face a little more, but I created this special research and tracking area. So that way my mind knows like, hey, this isn't stuff you need to do right away. I put the someday tag on these things so I can get to them whenever I want. 
So far, I'm really liking this experiment. It's cut down on the apps that I use, so I don't have all these different silos of information. I just have the one. And the reason why I feel they belong in a task manager is because each one of these items is something that can be completed. If I make the shortcut that's on that list, I can mark that as completed. If I watch that movie, I can mark that as completed. So that's why I kind of felt like, I should try this in a task manager as opposed to a notes app. A little known feature about things is you can actually create headings within a project. So if you take the plus icon that's in the bottom right hand corner and in a project, drag it to the left side, all the way to the left side of that project, you can create a heading and you can insert whatever text you want for that heading. So I use these to break up different projects. So for like the games I wanna play project, I use them to show what consoles games are on. So whether it's a Switch or a PS5. Same for movies and TVs, I can show the different medium. I may even take this a step further in the future and break this up by streaming service. These headings also work great for group projects. So I'm a bit of a control freak if you haven't figured this out. So what I would use these for is to track tasks that I'm responsible for and others are responsible for, but those other tasks, I still need to make sure they get done because they would reflect back on the tasks that I'm doing. I've talked about in the past the book Getting Things Done, and while I have some serious issues with it, it has some good points. And one of the things that I've borrowed from that book is called the brain dump. It basically, it's just the idea of getting everything out of your head on onto a piece of paper or whatever. So whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed or I just got a lot going on, I will sit down with my iPad and go into the inbox section of things. Now the inbox section is basically kind of just a generic dumping ground. This is where I will sit down and just take everything that's in my head and put it in things. That way I can just get it out. And then once I've got everything out of my head, I can go back and assign it to projects or areas, add reminders or due dates or whatever. With iPadOS 14, things added the support for Scribble. Now what Scribble does is it allows you to take the Apple Pencil and just handwrite out tasks in things, and then it converts them to typed text. So if you have terrible handwriting like me, you don't have to sit there and try and read your handwriting. In fact, it does a really good job of interpreting my terrible handwriting uh, and converting it to type text. Personally, I feel like this is the best way to do a brain dump just because I can sit down with just the iPad and write things out with no distractions. And this is pretty much the only time I use Scribble is when I'm doing a brain dump. I don't really find it useful for just entering one-off tasks. That's, you know, I'll just type it out on a keyboard for that. Um, but when I do use Scribble, I'm really glad I have my Paperlike. Paperlike is a channel sponsor and one of my favorite iPad accessories. So Paperlike is an iPad screen protector, but it adds texture. So when you're writing with the Apple Pencil, it feels a lot closer to pen and paper as opposed to plastic on glass, which isn't a great feeling. So when I'm doing my brain dump with Scribble and the Apple Pencil, I'm using that Paperlike. So that way it's a much more pleasant interaction. If you use the Apple Pencil for anything, I highly recommend checking out the Paperlike. I'll put my link in the description below to where you can get one. Now, another way I add tasks to things is automation. I know, what a surprise. I bet you didn't see that one coming, right? Automation, me, Pff, no. One thing I will point out before I go any further is Things is not a universal app. Things is a separate iPhone app and an iPad app. So when I talk about shortcuts here in just a second, know that the iPhone actions and the iPad actions are completely different. I get around this using an if statement and the get device details action. I'll put a template in the description below along with all the other shortcuts that I mentioned. Um, that way you can kind of build off that template if you wanna do stuff like I'm doing, or you can just use the shortcuts that I'm already using. Throughout the day, I use my new task shortcut. And this one's pretty simple, but very powerful. It starts off with an ask for input and you can enter a single task or you can add multiple tasks by creating new lines for each task. It will then split each of those lines up and then use a repeat action. So every single one of those lines will become its own task. And then of course it'll use that if statement and get device detail to add it, whether it's an iPhone or an iPad. This is pretty handy if I do need to do a brain dump and I'm not in my office or something and I just need to get some stuff out of my head pretty quickly and into my task manager. Now I also use a shortcut that creates 
project templates. The one that I use the most is for video projects. Probably not a surprise there. What this does is it has a template of all the steps that I use for when I create a video. So it'll create a project and things, a new project, and then add all of those steps to the project. Now this uses the X callback URL as opposed to the built-in things actions uh, because the built-in things actions don't allow you to create a project and then add all those tasks within the same shortcut. It's two separate things. So. While that's kind of unfortunate, the X callback URL works just fine. There's a text action in there and you can replace those steps in there with whatever you want. Another form of automation in things is mail to things. So if you go into settings, things cloud, email, there's well, an email address there. You can take that email address and create a contact out of it or whatever. Then you can start sending emails, forwarding emails, whatever you want to that email address. The benefit of doing this is you will get a URL in the notes field. So if you tap on that URL, it will jump back to that original email. This is extremely handy to have if you're somebody that uh, gets a lot of email, but you can't necessarily do something with that email right away if you're waiting on something. I get this a lot where I'll receive an email address and like I'm, I'm waiting for something else to show up or I need some other piece of information before I can properly respond to that. So I'll just send this to things and then when I get that other piece of info, I can then go back and respond to it. And with it being stored in things, I can just tap that URL and it opens right into mail to that email. Repeating tasks and projects are also a form of automation. I use monthly repeating tasks to remind me to pay certain bills. This is incredibly handy because you don't want to forget to pay your electric bill. I also use a weekly repeating task to remind myself to water the plants because, well, you don't really want that plant to die. That would make for an ugly background. I also have a monthly repeating project to remind myself about my newsletter. This way I have the project and all the tasks for each step of creating that newsletter in there and it pops up every single month to remind me. By the way, if you're not aware, I have a free monthly newsletter that includes shortcuts, wallpaper, and a ton of other stuff. There is a link in the description below if you'd like to check it out. So I talked a lot about automation, but what about creating tasks the old fashioned way? There is a plus button in that bottom right hand corner after all. Well, you can hit that and just start typing out a single task if you want. Incredibly handy still, I don't wanna overlook it. I don't wanna make it seem like every single time you put something in your task manager, you need to automate it. It's okay to hit that plus button and just type out a task. You can also drag that plus button and drop it into different sections. So if you're in the today view and you see your different areas and projects, you can drag that plus button into say like your personal area and then type out a task and it will assign it to the personal area automatically. You don't have to go through the move option. In things, you can create subtasks that are a part of your task. Technically they're called lists, but most task managers and most people call them subtasks. How I like to use this is for a task that I would like to sit down and do and just knock out completely right then and there, but it'll have multiple steps. So for example, pay my credit cards. I have two credit cards. So I have a task that says pay credit cards and then there's two subtasks. There is pay credit card one and pay credit card two. I can mark both of those as complete and when those subtasks are complete, I can mark the task as complete. Lists and subtasks are not the same as projects. Projects to me are something that's going to happen over a span of time. You're not gonna just like sit down and knock out a project in one sitting. It may take multiple days or may take you moving around or something like that. A task with lists or subtasks, that's something where you would just sit down and you would just knock out right then and there. It's not something overly complex. You don't need to create a project out of it. One thing that I hear from people that they find kind of confusing is things has both due dates and reminders. Now, to me, a due date is when, well, a project is due. So for example, uh, this video that I'm doing, this video is going to be due tomorrow, but I set the reminder for today. So that means I start the video today, but then I have the due date for later. So the reminder for me is kind of the start date or when to start working on something. And the due date is when it's due. And the nice thing about things is if you set a reminder for something and you say, okay, remind me about this tomorrow and it gets tomorrow and you have a due date for 
for three days from now. It'll show up in the today view, but it'll show that it's due in three days. I talked about the notes field already when it came to adding the link to the email. Uh, that's really handy feature. One other thing that I do is for big video projects like this, I will take the craft deep link to that, that page, that outline, and I will add it to things. So that way, if I'm looking at that project in things, I can hit that deep link and it'll open straight to craft. There's lots of other things you can do with that notes field, but that's kind of what I like to use it for. So that's it. That's how I handle task management. I hope you guys got something out of this. Like I said, don't feel you need to copy me to be productive. This is what works for me. Find what works for you. And hopefully there's some stuff in this video that works for you as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit the like button if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I talk about iPads, automation, productivity stuff, and have a great day.